Hello everyone, welcome to our wrap of day two of the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. Now today our leaders went past the 1,000 kilometre milestone as they battled conditions under that really tough outback sun. Now over the past six challenges, new on solar team from the Netherlands and Japan's Tokai University have shared the honours at each event and that rivalry is continuing this year. The Dutch team are still out in front at the end of day two, but they did cop a 10 minute penalty early on for speeding, which means their lead is now only eight kilometres. Tokai, well they started the day in third spot, but quickly jumped into second when they overtook Team Twente's red engine. In the Michelin Cruiser class, all teams have arrived at the overnight control stop at Tennant Creek with the opportunity for charging there. Powercore Sun Cruiser was the first there, arriving at 2.09 this afternoon. Solar Team Eindhoven just seven minutes behind them, and the University of New South Wales entry has jumped into third after the team from the University of Minnesota had to be trailered into Tennant Creek. But they do remain positive and hope that their 2013 challenge isn't over. Tracy Kotsia caught up with some of the front runners. The third control stop on the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge is here at Tennant Creek, but it's also the end of the first stage for the cruiser class. But what does that mean for the teams involved? Yeah, you have to uh, deal with, with the charge in your battery. Uh, the best is to, to reach this control stop with, with an empty battery, of course. But yeah, that's, that's really a, a risk because you don't want to be uh, at, at like 10 kilometers of this stop and then standing still. You get a high score if you recharge less. So we have three opportunities to recharge plus the one in, at the start. Uh, so that's four and yeah, your score is normalized on the numbers of charges you, you do. So with the chance to top up their batteries tonight, the teams were able to pick up speed in the final kilometres of Stage 1 and it was the Bochum solar car team that arrived at the control stop first. Uh, I think it was uh, two hours ago that so we passed uh, Eindhoven and had the first place. How did it feel to overtake them? Uh, it's a really nice feeling because uh, now we are the first one. Bochum passed us at first hour, I guess. Uh, then we were behind them uh, at the, the Merit control stop. It was a gap of two minutes. Then we passed Bochum, uh, and I think uh, two hours before we reached uh, this control stop, Bochum passed us again. So a real game of cat and mouse developing between these leading cruiser class cars, but it's not just speed that counts in this points-based category. We're very pleased because we know that we have a better score at the number of persons. We were almost all the way with three persons, only the first stage were, were two. There's a lot of things at play in terms of the scoring. Is that quite a significant thing that you have three passengers and they have one? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, first thing is then the speed, but yeah, we are not that, that far behind them. And um, yeah, we also have the uh, persons. Uh, that's where we have the first score. Right? And then there is the, the recharging, because we can recharge tonight. And it looks like Bochum is also going to recharge. So that's where we are even, so yeah, that's really a strategic uh, decision to put more people in the car and try to keep up with both. Will you stay with three people or are there some other stages where you'll potentially drop back to two or one or, or even push it up to four? Yeah, that actually also depends on the weather, uh, but also the distance between the two points where you can recharge. For instance, we can recharge tomorrow and maybe it's an advantage to put more people if it's sunny and otherwise we have to draw back to three or two. Now the cruiser class can get a bit confusing, with so many variables at play from the number of people in the car through to the way they harvest their energy, you can be sure that the drama of this competition will be played out all the way to Adelaide. And of course when they get to Adelaide, the final piece of the jigsaw will be placed when the cars are assessed on practicality. In the GoPro Adventure class, Aurora Evolution has maintained its stranglehold on the class and is actually sitting fifth in the overall standings. Antikari and Sophie Force still fill the minor placings. So despite not quite reaching today's original goal of Alice Springs, the leaders will be hoping to still get as far as Cooper Pedy tomorrow. Weather-wise, things are expected to ease up a little bit for the drivers tomorrow in day three, but the temperatures are still gonna hit the high 30s, which is perfect for keeping the cars charged. So that's it for now. Don't forget to join us for tomorrow, day three of the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge.